I am slow. Like, really, really slow at drawing. But I have to draw a lot of figures if I want to improve. So I had to do the unthinkable and summon... Okay, well, maybe not this stickman, but really, let's see how to turn this into something usable that's gonna make gesture drawing easy, fast, and useful to your growth. Let's go. So, we start with the concept of a stick mat, but we really need proportions here, and we also need landmarks. We wanna keep track of the hips as well as the tips of the shoulders, and we need to be aware of where the joints bend. Then, we can use some sticks or triangles for hands and feet. So, how about this? Yeah, that's a pretty good start, but it's still kinda stiff, and it doesn't cover the two staples of gesture drawing, which are weight and action. Also, I would add it's fundamental to include another one, space. So we want to give this figure a sense of weight, dynamism, and space. And to do that, we're going to power up the stick man with CSI. Uh, no, 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 no. We're not going to magically enlarge the picture and add details that do not exist. But we're going to use C curves, S curves, and straights to turn the average Joe Stickman into Stickman 2.0 or Stickman Pro or Stickman 360 if you like, although I think that's been taken already. So how about this? Ah, better! The Stickman is now balanced, but dynamically. It has a sense of weight and exists in 3D space. I made the floor plane obvious by adding a cross. Also, notice how I used the C's and made basically other S curves out of them. This is actually how muscles flow in the body rather than by making a, you know... In a way, artists call contrapposto. Uh, my very Italian mom will yell at me if she hears me pronounce it like that. But anyway, enough chit-chatting. Let's put this into practice so you can understand how it works on actual reference. Okay, so I'm gonna start with the head and I'm gonna use a diamond shape in this case because she's looking that direction. An oval is fine, like whatever floats your boat. Then I'm gonna do a slightly curved C for the neck. I'm gonna find the shoulders. And then for the body, I'm gonna try to guess or get this uh, basically an S curve because I want the body to look like it's twisting. I'm going to accentuate ever so slightly because I don't want it to be too stiff. And I'm gonna find the tips of the shoulders I'm going to draw my arms, again, trying to keep everything as dynamic as possible. And as you can see, I'm not really using any straight here. I'm just going with very dynamic lines. I'm going to find the hips. And I probably want to push them a little further because of the curve that I made. Then uh, the weight bearing leg is her left, which is right below the head. So I want to keep that and I'm going to just leave a little landmark there. I'm not really concerned about measurements here, but if you want to do that, it's about halfway uh, from the bottom of the hips. So it's somewhere about there. And then I'm gonna go ahead and use another S curve here. And maybe she's tiptoeing, so something like that. I'm gonna mark the knee. And then the other leg doesn't really have any weight, so I'm gonna use, I'm gonna invent a little bit here. I'm gonna use an S curve for the femur or for the thigh and then go back here and a straight for the foot. And that's pretty much it. I want to exaggerate the pose and make sure that I also get that floor plane with a cross. So now I have the figure planted on the ground firmly. Again, don't be overly concerned with proportions at this point. Uh, this is a little off. Actually, it's quite a bit off. The head is too small, but it's fine. As long as it reads like that pose, it's okay. And to prove this works, I actually got Pose Maniacs here, and I'm gonna attempt a 10 seconds pose. Please don't judge me. Oh god, I'm scared. Of course, you're gonna find that this is really not enough for longer times. Like, if you go up to one minute, this is gonna start showing its limits. So I recommend building on top of it. For example, you can start adding some volumes, like say loops around shoulders or hips to strengthen the orientation, uh, more loops around the limbs as well, maybe a ribcage. 
And yeah, it's probably not the best method to tackle for shortened poses. But you could also argue that because you can see through the pose, you actually have a better idea of how it behaves in 3D space. But this is absolutely going to be a game changer if you want to tackle those very difficult poses that are like 10 seconds or 20 or 30. At least it was for me. And trust me, it is going to help because you will need to draw a lot of poses to improve. Speaking of, if you do want to improve, I recommend checking out this other video I made where I go way more in depth on the fastest way to improve your art. That's all I have for you today. Good luck and take care.